Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Just uh, starting to recover from a pretty bad cold, so hopefully I can make it through this message without losing my voice. Anyway, we are in Mark chapter 15, and we pick up our study in verse 18. So if you can open up your Bible to Mark 15, that'd be great. Mark 15, verse 18. And while you're doing that, the Scripture Verse by Verse website, as always, can be found at thebibleversebyverse.com. You can study the Bible from Genesis through Revelation using my audio Bible messages right there at thebibleversebyverse.com. It's easy, it's convenient, it is, it is user-friendly, I guess you would say, because all you have to do is click on the book you want to study, choose from three complete series going through the Bible verse by verse, click on the book you want to study, the chapter, open your Bible, follow along and listen as I teach it verse by verse. That's at thebibleversebyverse.com. Okay, Mark chapter... 15, beginning in verse 18, Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin reading in verse 16. Jesus, well, let's just read it. You'll recognize it. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. So <clears throat> they mock him with the crown of thorns. He claimed to be a king. They mock him with his crown of thorns. They mock him with that dirty ragged purple robe and they mock him with phony worship but come judgment day when these same soldiers will be forced to bend their knee and worship to Jesus they will remember the day that they mocked him with phony worship Verse 19, and they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshiped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And I think I mentioned this last time, I, I don't know how much pain a man can take, but Jesus definitely was pushed to the limit for us. He had that crown of thorns on his head. And then they drove those thorns, if you can imagine, deep into his skull when they smashed it with their clubs. And then to add insult to injury, they spit at him. This would be a terrible thing to do if Jesus was a guilty criminal. It would be even more terrible if Jesus was simply an innocent man falsely accused. But this is the innocent, sinless son of Almighty God who never did anything never had an evil thought, period, ever, from day one, never did anything to harm anyone, never said anything to harm anyone, never did anything but good for people. And they treat him like this. And here you see the depravity of sinful man. 
Here you see the reason that Jesus had to come and die for us, to pay for our sins. Because who else but the sinless Son of God could be offered as a substitutionary sacrifice in place of rotten people like us? And the only thing that amazes me more than the evil of these soldiers is Jesus' willingness to put up with it. To put up with it in order to suffer and die to pay for it. And our sins as well. 21. And they compel one Simon of Cyrene who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Simon was just pretty much minding his own business when suddenly the Romans forced him to carry the cross. Romans could conscript anybody to do anything for any length of time that they wanted to. And Jesus was no doubt very weak from nearly being beaten to death with the flogging. So there was no way that he's going to carry his cross to Calvary. Not going to happen. And as a result, you have Simon, who didn't know it, but he was serving God by carrying this cross. To him, it was just an unexpected interruption. The unexpected interruptions that can sometimes bother us because they tend to set back our plans or sometimes even seem to be unfair to us are part of God's sovereign plan, plan and can be embraced by faith. 22 and they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots for them, what every man should take. God doesn't go into detail about the horrors of the crucifixion. The people back then knew exactly how terrible it was. It didn't need any explanation. The people were familiar with it. And the Romans, they crucified a lot of people. But they would not crucify a Roman citizen because it was such a hideous form of death. A Roman citizen was exempt from it. And they crucified so many that sometimes they would run out of crosses. So it was very common. 25. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. 9 a.m. is the time that they nailed Jesus to the cross. 26, and the superscription of the accusation was written over the, over the king of the Jews. Let's read it again. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. Pontius Pilate authorized the sign on the cross. You know, he had always hated the Jews. And he hated them even worse after they pressured him into executing who he knew was innocent, Jesus. And this sign was a way for Pilate to say, hey, Israel, look what I'm doing to your king. How do you like that? 27. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left being crucified between two criminals, I suppose just added to the Lord's humiliation. He died like a criminal. 
But he never committed a crime. He never committed a sin. He died like a criminal between criminals. But he died for our crimes against God. 28. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed at him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. In other words, if you're God, Jesus, like you say you are, prove it by doing what we say. So, if God doesn't act the way they want, they won't believe in him. Too bad. Guess they'll just have to die in a state of unbelief and be thrown into the flames of hell. Because no one, no one challenges God to do anything. And they especially won't get him off the cross when he is so graciously dying for their sins and our sins. And by the way, God doesn't need to prove himself to anyone. He has already done that. The Bible says, that creation declares the glory of God. And the Bible itself is the word of God. And both of those divine revelations, the creation of God and the written word of God, speak volumes to anyone who has an honest heart. God is not on trial. You are. I am. We are the ones on trial. Creation and the written word of God provide all the proof, all the divine testimony that we need to tell us that there is a God, that he is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are on trial as to how we will respond to that. If we reject him, we are guilty. We have rejected the evidence. Verse 31. So also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, he saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. You know, these religious rulers knew full well that Jesus had already done more miracles than could be counted. One more miracle isn't going to change their mind about Jesus. There comes a point when God says enough is enough. You either receive Christ or you don't. But don't go asking for any more proof that he is the Son of God. Don't go asking for any more proof that he's the Savior who died for your sins. Because if you don't believe the testimony of God's word, then a dozen, a million miracles aren't going to convince you. And they wouldn't convince these guys either. Because if he came off the cross, they would make something up to explain it away. The nails weren't in tight enough. Or his disciples struck, snuck up the back of it and loosened the nails or something. They'd come up with something. So he's not going to get, well, he wouldn't come down from the cross anyway. Verse 33. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So think about this. 
the sixth to the ninth hour. That's from noon to three. You're talking about the brightest time of the day. It became dark. And no, this wasn't eclipse, an eclipse of the sun either. There was a full moon, always is, at Passover. And you can't have an eclipse of the sun during a full moon. This is the Father turning off the lights as his son pays for our sin. 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The father broke fellowship with the son as he was paying for our sins on the cross. Our sins were placed on Jesus when he was on that cross. And so the Father, for the first time in the history of forever, broke off fellowship with the Son. The Bible says that Jesus became sin for us. And God will not stand in the presence of sin. To those of you who think that you can go to your grave in sin, unforgiven through Jesus Christ, to, zo to those of you who think that, that, that you can do that and still make it to heaven, you better take a real close look at what's going on here. If God broke fellowship with his eternal son while he bore our sins, then God certainly will not allow any impenitent, unforgiving sinner into his presence after they're dead. You will go to hell and you will burn and you will suffer and you will be tormented for not just sinning, but for rejecting what God's Son did for you right here. You must repent of your sin. You must turn away from sin. You must turn to Jesus Christ. You must make a commitment to follow Him. You must trust in His finished work on the cross. Jesus said, if you love father or mother, son or daughter, husband or wife, more than me, you cannot be my disciple. You have to be dead serious about receiving him, trusting in what he did on the cross, and making him your Lord. And don't let anyone tell you that that's not part of the plan of salvation. That's not the gospel. It is. It's what Jesus himself said. It's all wrapped up in the words, believing. But don't think for a second that you're going to get into heaven if your sins aren't paid for through Jesus Christ, if your sins aren't washed away by you repenting and receiving him as Lord and Savior, you don't have a chance. 35. And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calleth Elijah. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed, and gave him to drink, saying, Let be, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Now believe me, they did not give Jesus a drink out of compassion. They just wanted to prolong his life, to prolong their morbid entertainment. They're hoping to see Elijah come. And rescue Jesus. Well, this is this is like a circus to them. 37, and Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the spirit. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to the bottom. The torn curtain 
the torn veil which separated God, which was his holy place, the inner room of the temple, which is where that curtain was. It separated that, that throne room of God on earth where his presence was in a special way from not just the rest of the temple, but from, the, from mankind, the rest of the world. But that torn temple that separated God from man was ripped by the very hands of God to show that the death of his son paid the way for us to get into his presence. Nothing else ever tore that temple curtain. All the animal sacrifices that were offered throughout all the years, none of them tore that temple curtain. All the prayers, all the offerings, all the fastings, none of those things ever tore that temple curtain for anyone and made a way open to approach God Almighty. It was only the death of Jesus Christ. That should tell you that Jesus is the only way to get to God. There is no other way. Verse 39. And when the centurion who st stood facing him saw that he so cried out and gave up the spirit, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. This was an honest man. This was a centurion soldier the man who was in charge of the crucifixion. He probably had presided over who knows how many crucifixions. They were so common. He was an honest man. He was honest enough to study Jesus, to watch him during this entire ordeal, and then to admit he had to be God. Had to be. And you know what? If anyone honestly reads the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If you read it with an honest heart, open to truth, you will come to the same conclusion that this centurion soldier did. 40. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the Less and of Joseph and Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him and many other women who came up with him unto Jerusalem. These ladies had supported the Lord's ministry and they had proved their loyalty by being there even while he was suffering. Good Christians are loyal to Jesus even when it's difficult they can be counted on when there is nothing in it for them except an opportunity to show their devotion. Verse 42. And now when the evening was come, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor who also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. There were many, many bad religious rulers in that day. This Joseph, he was a religious ruler, but he was a good one. Actually, he had been a secret follower of Jesus but it's no secret anymore. After seeing what his fellow religious leaders did to Jesus, how they mistreated him, how it was such a mockery of justice, he doesn't care what they think anymore. He goes public for Jesus. There's a lot of people going public for their sin today. This is what I am. And I don't care if you like it or not. This is what I am. This is what I do. And they don't hide their sin. They flaunt their sin. How is it that reprobate sinners in this world can be so bold to flaunt their sin and yet so many professing Christians 
won't take that same stand for Jesus and hide the fact, oh, my, my religion is a personal thing, a baloney. Yes, your relationship with God is a personal thing, but if it's real, it's going to go public. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't tell me it's a personal thing between you and Jesus and that's where it stops. Don't tell me that. It's not real. You know, you talk about the things that are important to you. You just think about it. You do. You talk about the things that are important to you. And if Jesus is important to you, you're going to talk about him and you're not going to be ashamed. Let me just add this. He was a true follower of Christ. He had kept it secret, but at last he comes out in the open. And a secret follower of Christ, if they are true follower of Christ, will at some point stop hiding it. If they don't, then they're not a real Christian. Jesus says, if you deny me before men, then I will deny you before my father. Did you hear that? If you deny me before men, if you're ashamed of me in front of people, then I will be ashamed of you on judgment day. I'll say, I never knew you. Verse 44, and Pilate marveled, marveled if he were already dead and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. Crucifixion was designed to be a very slow, torturous death. Some people actually lingered for a couple of days. Most, most lived longer than Jesus did, but most were not beaten so bloody like he was before he was crucified either. 45. And when he knew it, when Pilate knew that he was dead, from the centurion he gave the body to Joseph. And he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and led him in a sepulcher, laid him in a sepulcher, which had been hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph beheld where he was laid. The Marys, more than one, watched where Jesus was laid so that they could return after the Sabbath on early Sunday morning and anoint his body. And that's where we'll pick it up next time. Story doesn't end here. That would be horrible if it did. We'll see next time. In the meantime, you can continue studying the Word of God at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at the thebibleversebyverse.com. If you have not begun a verse by verse study, of the entire Bible. I encourage you to do it today because there's nothing more important on earth than the written word of God. So you can study the Bible in its entirety, an in-depth Bible study, three complete series going through the Bible. This is a Bible college education in the truest sense of the word because all you're getting is Bible. You know, when I, went, when I attended Bible college, I just took Bible, 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 theology, Bible. All my electives, theology, Bible. Everything I, everything I could get biblically, I took. I took biblical history, but or church history, too. But I majored on the Bible, majored on theology, because I know that's the most important thing on earth. That's what tra That's what saves people. That's what transforms people into the image of Christ. So go to the BibleVerseByVerse.com and begin in Genesis. Go all the way through Revelation. Go through the whole Bible. It'll be a, a, a journey. It'll be an exciting journey for you. Study the whole Word of God. And if the Word of God blesses you, please remember this ministry is brought to you by your prayers and financial support. For over 30 years, it has been a faith ministry, which means I've never taken a cent from a large church or denomination. But I've always depended on individuals like you who love the Word of God and who want to contribute. 
Pray for this ministry. Give as the Lord may lead at thebibleversebyverse.com by clicking the donate button. Until next time, so long everyone.